everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Heuristic Show. Uh, today, I am joined by my colleague Shiva and also CRO consultant Lorenzo. Hey, guys. To kick things off, I'm going to pass over to Shiva. Uh, we've all had a bit of a review of the site um, and we've got some ideas or, around some areas of opportunity uh, for Lily's Kitchen. So Shiva, how did you get on reviewing the site and where do you think are kind of the key areas of opportunity? Yeah, for me, it hit obviously hit a little bit closer to home because I do have a dog who I try and always shop for like the best food. And I, my dad and my sister are both veterinarians, so grew up with animals, obviously. So there's a lot of that that just naturally hit home with me. Um, my initial impression of the site, I really liked kind of the brand direction, like the use of icons and the color scheme. It was just, it felt very warm and appealing. Um, one of the things that kind of like immediately stood out to me was probably a purposeful brand direction, but there weren't really a lot of like pictures of dogs, um, which is super interesting. My initial impression was like, wow, this, it's, the website felt cool and clean. Um, my journey through the site uncovered some pretty interesting things. So if you hover over for dogs, and then I'm shopping for my dog who's an adult, one year to seven. So go ahead and click that. Um, the one thing that stood out to me first was like, okay, I selected one through seven. On the life stage filters on the left, why does it have one through seven and senior eight plus year? Um, so that was kind of like, well, I selected an age. Why didn't why do I have to select it again? So that was kind of weird. Um, and then immediately I'm like, well, you know, what's next? How am I going to shop for food, wet or dry food? And on the left-hand side filters, you didn't see any opportunities to filter dry or wet. Even though if you like hover over the menu at the top, it actually does have like dry and wet categories. So they do do that, just not on the filter options, which felt a little bit of a miss on my side. I don't think images of the product bag are probably as impactful as images of the product itself. So like beef jerky, I don't necessarily care as much about what the bag I'm going to get is like how tasty does the treat actually look to me? You know, obviously dogs aren't going to be buying this on their own, but you'd like to see the product and be like, you know, I'd love for Jordy to eat this or whatever. So that was something that seemed like potentially testing or, and I knew some of, some of the, uh, some of the product images, although I guess this one doesn't, but some of the products actually do have the images. So potentially trying into testing that. Um, it was also hard to see on the category page, like not a lot of differentiation between um, like product to product and potentially testing like product description copy on the pages could be an interesting test for, for the category page as well. I think the other thing for me um, when I was browsing the site was very much around this how much to feed calculator. So it's obviously really important that we make sure that our dogs are getting enough food, but not too much. Um, and it's a bit of a minefield to really understand like how much you should be feeding. So when I arrived on the homepage and saw this calculator kind of functionality of how much to feed, I was I was really pleased. So you go through these steps, you say you've got a dog. Um, again, not entirely sure where she sits in here, probably here. Um, and you kind of go through these. And then I started to kind of come across a few like smaller UX issues. Um, so for example, here, I only have the option uh, to enter the weight in kilograms uh, rather than any other metrics. Similarly here, you're asking what do they like to eat, but I'm here for some new food. So what if I hadn't tried this type of food before and I actually don't know the answer to this? Maybe I can then say both. Uh, but there's no explanation about, well, what is the difference? What are the benefits of one over the other? Um, I know also uh, that there's some maybe guidelines about whether there should be a, a mix, like if people, if if, if dogs should have 20% dry and 80% wet, then maybe you could tell me that here. Again, there's no supporting information on here. And also, why can I only pick one? Because, I mean, my dog, like we, we get her a selection of different, different foods. Um, right. Yeah, so it, I would prefer to be able to select more from here and I'm confused about why I can't. So say if I click lamb hot pot and then I say finish and then essentially what I end up with is a recommended calorie amount per day, which is useful, but then the process just completely ends. Like I have a phone number and an email address or the option to start the process again. But actually what I want now is now take me to a product page 
with a suitable amount of like food selected or some indication of how much food or how many tins that means per day, I feel like there's just a really miss, big missed opportunity here in connect, using this data that I've just provided you and, and then right. personalizing the rest of my experience to say, right, okay, we know that you you have a dog that's this big and therefore needs this many calories. Therefore, we recommend this box of you know 18 tins and that's going to last you for four weeks or whatever it is. Maybe you don't need to know how much to buy before you buy it. You just buy it in bulk and then you know you just get through it. But I think for me, my brain kind of worked more like, you know, I don't want to, and, and I guess this is where we start thinking about this subscription kind of model of like, you know, how much do I need over what kind of uh, time frame? Because I think the whole, you know, the whole purpose of the subscription model is, you know, order what you need. And then when you need more, it will magically kind of appear because I, theoretically you'll have worked out how much you need. So I think um, in terms of the fact that they offer subscriptions, but they're not utilizing that calculator to help kind of facilitate that um, is, is a missed opportunity. The goal is to uh, keep on increasing the percentage of people that choose subscription over one time. There's a lot of things they can do to increase the perceived value of the subscription over the one time. So explain all the benefits, even uh, offering additional like intrinsic or extrinsic motivation and benefits just for the subscription customers. Um, one thing also, you're highlighting the, the frequency. I think also there's an opportunity here to actually recommend the right frequency yeah. uh, based on a bunch of inputs that the customer can even put, which they could even be the results of the of the calculator that they've gone through, right? Because, you know, again, I don't know how much food each person has to give to the dog. And I don't expect the user to make the mental math of how many weeks to, to select. Actually interesting, it says that the discount and the free um, delivery is from the, the second order on. But an interesting thing is that it's hidden be, uh, behind a tooltip, right? So here, you know, you it would be interesting to actually see how many people click on the tool tip, yeah. because yeah. my hypothesis here is that a lot of people don't realize that the 5% discount is not from the first purchase, yeah. but it's from the second one. Yeah. So I wonder if, if there, I believe it's an issue, but it would be interesting to, to see that. Yeah, I think like going through this as, as a user, um, I completely questioned that when I saw 5% off and free delivery. And then I entered the basket and the checkout mm -hmm. and I didn't see reference to that 5% off or free delivery. I, I, I was, I was questioning uh, what was going on. I completely missed the fact that it was all, all future orders. Um, and like you say, where's that incentive? Like, yes, I would get that on future orders, but right now I'm not really thinking about future orders, yeah. thinking about right now. And there is no incentive for me to just to, to set up a subscription right now. For this product, um, there is an opportunity actually to push a little bit of uh, AOV uh, further because this is just one unit, right? I understand that could be uh, maybe a segment of, of people that they just want to try. Maybe they're not too sure about uh, what kind of dog food they want to switch from right now. And they might want to try this little quantity. But I think, you know, for those segments of customers that are like, no, 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 okay, we want to go big and like try it for a lot of different days. Um, one quantity is a little bit too little so i think there's an opportunity here you know you can do it on the product page or you can even do it on add to cart to actually push people to buy more quantities um, to to increase uh, aov um and then i think the the next uh, thought i had was more on uh, the checkout so the, the interesting thing that uh, it's about this is that when uh, the user selects subscription and then goes to the checkout uh, the guest checkout is completely gone. Uh, basically, it just gives you in the first step of the checkout just two options, either to sign in if you have you know, previously created an account 
or to create an account, which is like super painful. It would be interesting to see what the exit rate of, of this page is, because my hypothesis is quite high because they force it to uh, register and create an account. So it's weird that they don't, I understand why they're not displaying the, the guest checkout, because in order to manage the subscription, you need to have an account. So there's a couple of solutions that, um, you know, I wonder if they, they do that for the other checkout, the one-time order checkout. They could, A, uh, option one, they could add one field in the next step of the checkout, the delivery, where they just ask um, the user to fill out a password, and that's how they would create uh, the checkout. Or another option, which I wonder if it's something that might already be doing for the one-time checkout, just simply add uh, the ability to create an account on the thank you page. So once the user already, already bought the product. Could I add two points of feedback on this form too? Mm -hmm. So on the you can see how the form occupies 50% of the page and there's mm -hmm. just white space on the right. I think it's because they save that area for the guest checkout, but if you're not guest checking out, because they're not subscription. So there's just plenty of opportunity knowing that the user is subscription to boom, throw some benefits down there. But secondly, I just realized this, look at the, look at the tick box, tick this box if you don't want to receive emails. So you're automatically opting in and you have to opt out instead of the other way around. I, that's strange. Thank you. 100% with you. The other thing to mention. <laughs> On, on this process is um, as part of the research for this session, I went through this process and um, I filled in all my details, clicked create an account. Then I had to go and check my emails to verify my email address, come back um, to the website via that email. And then I was taken to the my account like page. If I just sign in, I was, I was brought back here despite the fact that I, I was like halfway through the checkout or at least sort of, I just started the checkout process in my head. And then I'm like, oh, okay. I've been like taken out of it, like to check my emails, but then not even brought back to the checkout process. Then obviously, luckily the, the item was still in my basket. So then I, I kind of had to go through the process again. So just to wrap up, um, quick fire round, Shiva, if you could test one thing on the Lily's Kitchen website, what would you test and why? Yeah, I think like content felt like an opportunity as just like a theme of, if you like look at their product pages, they have some really cool content. They have some awesome use of graphics. I think promotion of that content intelligently would be super helpful. So for me, it would be take some of that really interesting content that doesn't exist above the fold on the product page and put it above the fold. Give users a reason to scroll down rather than a simple, very quick byline and a picture of the bag of the food. That copy is really powerful. They do a good a job of it, just promote it more. Cool, good Lorenzo, one. your turn. Yeah, for me, uh, if, the, if the goal is to increase uh, increase the, the, the number of people that take subscription versus one time. Um, I would make like a strategic, I would say test, meaning that it's more like a business uh, decision to basically offer more benefits, more value to the people that um, pick subscription, almost like feel, make them feel exclusive with a bunch of, uh, again, benefits and, and, and value. Um, just because if you increase the number of subscribers, um, your business like tends to grow much, much more than just like one time. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.